My name is Rituraj and I'm making a film. My film is a relationship drama about two people in New Zealand whose lives are changed forever by an earthquake in Nepal 12,000 kilometers away. In this critique I want to talk about the director and cinematographer whose style I've been influenced by the most. The director whose work I've been looking at is Ashgar Farhadi. He rose to fame with his 2011 film A Separation which won an Oscar for the best foreign language film but he had been making good movies for long before that I am particularly inspired by Farhadi for a number of reasons for one his films are about relationships relationships between couples family and community his films are also punctuated with revelations in fireworks wednesday a wife suspects her husband of having an affair until he convinces her that he isn't of course we later find out that he is in fact having an affair in the past an iranian man who has deserted his french wife returns to complete his divorce and finds out that his wife is having an affair with his friend Now, this film is particularly relevant to me because it deals with intercultural relationships much like my film does Farhadi has written or co-written all his films my film being based on a story that i wrote i find his work particularly relevant to what i'm doing Farhadi's films often have open endings in fireworks wednesday we are not told explicitly if the wife finds out about the husband's affair and in the separation when the daughter is asked to choose which of her parents she wants to stay with the film ends without telling us that it was the separation and this book by haruki murakami that influenced the open ending in my own story visually farhadi uses a lot of the classical frame within a frame tool his films often feature long shots often with a pov character He uses jump cuts and cutaways of inanimate objects that subtly tell stories. And all of these are influences that I wish to incorporate in my own film. For cinematography, I've been looking at the work of Peter Andrews, a pseudonym for Steven Soderbergh. The fact that he is a director and cinematographer makes it relevant for me to analyze his work. With realistic lighting, loose handle shots, and blatant use of color schemes at times, his work bears the mark of someone who was a guerrilla filmmaker and a pioneer of independent low-budget cinema. He is also a strong proponent of digital cinematography and was adamant on using a red camera on his film Che in spite of development issues. I have my screenplay ready. Like I mentioned in my last critique, I was finding it difficult to write dialogue, especially for my Kiwi character. So I've been organizing workshops with actors where we write and rewrite dialogue. I guess to show more worry from her about him going over. At at the moment the way it is, it almost just kind of sounds like she's like, "No, don't go," kind of thing. It is very useful for me to have a native speaker of the language go through my screenplay. and help me modify dialogue wherever necessary I always thought my biggest challenge would be doing the work of both director and cinematographer 
But my biggest challenge so far has been casting. Especially finding people to play my Nepali characters. When I wrote the concept last year, I thought I would use friends from my community. But now it's clear that these roles require strong performances and I can't just use anyone. I'm now looking to work with someone who is South Asian, if not Nepali, and try and work my way around with the dialogue and accent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I found some locations. A friend of mine owns the perfect restaurant, although it is a little bit far away. I found a house. There are still some locations I need to finalize. Some of them ask for money and that's one thing I don't have. While writing the screenplay, I hit a writer's block. And some people told me that the film paints the Nepali community in bad light. And that was not my intention. I realized that I had not done justice to my main Nepali character. And I was not able to build an ending. So to clear my head, I started writing. I thought and I wrote and I thought and I wrote and at 2.30 pages I completed a novel. Of course, I can't have most of it in my film because so much of it happens in Nepal. But the exercise helped me shape my story and strengthen my characters. I will be using a lot of movement in my film. Like Ashkar Farhadi, I will be using a lot of frames within frames. I will be using jump cuts and long shots. I am faced with a few questions about the look of my film. What will a house inhabited by a mixed couple look like? What things will line the kitchen shelves and the living room walls? What does an Indian restaurant owned by a Nepali look like? What would a town hall function organized by Nepali people in NZ to raise money for an earthquake look like? I'm looking to take help from my actors to help me achieve this look. I'll let them dress the sets. I will be shooting on the Blackmagic Mini Orsa 4K with hard lenses. It's a good camera and gives me a much higher resolution than the postgrad video camera we have now. I'll also be using music in my film. A folk song being performed by a Nepali band in one of the scenes will work as a background score throughout my film. My essay will discuss the evolution of digital cinema and the arguments surrounding it. I will also be looking at the blurring lines between video and cinema and the democratization of cinema technology. The second part of my essay will talk about the influences of digital filmmaking on Nepali cinema. The path ahead still looks challenging. I will try my best to extract quality performances from my actors and handle my combined role as director and cinematographer to the best of my ability.